All right, so welcome back. We are reviewing the local user and group management capability of the Centrify agent for Windows. In the previous video, we did an overview of the description. And uh, in this video, I want to cover something that happened in my environment. Um, I set up uh, the capability into enforcing mode, right? So uh, originally, and one of the things that happened was um, I'm running clustering service here. And this account is a local account that is used by the um, local identity for the clustering service. But when you're using it in enforcing mode, this happens. Um, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and reproduce it again. So I'm going to set it into enforcing mode, right? So when you do that, you're telling the Centrify client that the Centrify zone, um, either by way of um, the zone level assignments, uh, I mean, local user and groups, or potentially any uh, any override. So notice that in here I have some stuff that I've that existed from before. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete uh, and 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 re and delete this. So my authoritative uh, information from this zone is there should be two accounts aside from the built-in local demo and local group group uh, demo one, and, and this should be it, right? So the expectation is that if I run uh, a DC flush minus L is that this CLI user will be removed. So let's go ahead and do it. So effectively, uh, I have broken my application, right? So notice that the built-in accounts are left alone, but what do you do when this happens, right? So you, you have to be able to plan for it. In my particular case, um, the clustering service running here is quite forgiving because um, all I need to do is to restart the clustering service uh, and that will go away. Um, let me see. And that would be the under W Windows clustering. Cluster service. Here it is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna restart it. Actually, it is not a manageable server. Okay, service. It is managed centrally. So the key here is, um, you know, I I right now need to be able to plan for this, right? So um, what I need to do is recreate that same account in the zone with the same attributes and um, it should be it. So let me just copy it from another machine that is running the cluster service. It's gonna be regenerated at some point. I just don't know when. So I'm just gonna make my life super easy here. But these are the type of things that we need to be able to, um, um, to plan for, especially if you are in services. So it's CLI USR in caps, and it has this description. So um, CLI USR. So I'm gonna make sure that in this machine, so I'm gonna do the override in the, in the corresponding machine. So I'm gonna add user to the zone. And the full name of it, let's just copy it from where, CLI USR, and then maybe I can. And um, please paste. Okay, the state is always enabled. And I believe that this is user cannot change password and password never expires. So maybe it's already reprovisioned. See, it's already reprovisioned. So it actually kind of pulls real quickly here, but I'm gonna go ahead and press okay here, right? And I'm going to um, re-enable enforcing mode. And I'm gonna do the DC flush minus L. So my expectation is that this guy is gonna be conserved here. And let me see if my cluster is working as expected because um, this could be 
a potential deal breaker for me because I need to be able to run my cluster. But the key here is that when you're doing a deployment of local users and groups, uh, the group management on Windows, one of the planning uh, elements is to account for accounts, uh, groups, and memberships that must be left there. Because otherwise, when you implement the feature, if you want to implement it in enforcing mode, you will have a challenge. So um, being able to account for the local accounts and groups, uh, that's going to be important, kind of like what the deployment manager used to do locally as well. So expect, if you're in services, to plan for this. Um, I know that my cluster is running because it runs my, um, you know, it runs my uh, CPS on-premise. So if I do, if I do this simple version, I should be able to see that is running as expected. And um, let me see real quickly here. If it's running in the proper, it's running in the proper node, but I just want to make sure it's running on member two. So member two is running as expected. No problem. All I needed to do was to make sure I protect the, the identity by setting up the identity. Um, in this particular case, I did a, an override at the machine level where I designate that this, uh, this, um, um, this is actually the wrong console, um, that I designate that this CLI user exists in here. So I hope this uh, clarifies.